Some tasty offerings now from BBC One in MasterChef. Welcome again to MasterChef 1996 and the second program in our search for the finest amateur cook in the kingdom. This week our contestants all come from the east of England. As usual, I'll ask them to prepare a flawless three-course meal for four with a budget of £30 and just two and a half hours on the kitchen clock. Contestants are allowed to bring five specialist ingredients or items from their homes. We'll find out what those are, but first let's find out who they are. And we begin in the Red Kitchen. Michael Boning is a chartered surveyor from Norwich. He specializes professionally, that is, in pubs. Michael's work takes him complete with the tools of his trade to many of Norfolk's more unusual hostelries. An enthusiast of local history, Michael's a frequent visitor together with his wife, Leon, and their dog, Japs, to many of the ancient monuments which can be found throughout Norfolk. His own monument to the past is a period fairground carousel, which although now firmly attached to Maine's electricity, was originally powered by steam. In the yellow kitchen, Carolyn Dyer, she's from Swaffham, also in Norfolk. Carolyn's a radiographer at Addenbrooke's Hospital in distant Cambridge. Many of her finest menus are devised during the long drive to and from her work. Her husband, Ian, is a navigator with the RAF, flying tornadoes and currently based at RAF Marham. When Ian's away on overseas assignments, Carolyn devotes herself to the other occupants at her address, the ever-expanding family of doves, whose impressive cot is the star feature of her garden. In the blue kitchen, Andrew Whiteley from Stuttam in Bedfordshire. Andrew's an architectural consultant, and one of his current projects is a 30-style house under construction in nearby Hemel Hempstead. His own house is home to Andrew's ever-expanding collection of antique cookery books, which date from 1822 and have titles like Domestic Cooking by a Lady. But away from his aga, Andrew replaces book with ball and becomes the demon fast bowler with the odd googly thrown in for the Studham Village cricket team, keeping and trim throughout the year in the nets at Dunstable. Welcome to you all. Now let's find out about today's menus. Michael, what are you cooking for us? I'm cooking fillets of sole with spinach on papillot with saffron rice, rest of Gressingham duck, puree of leeks, galette potatoes, followed by individual grape flans with a fruit coulis. Splendid. Carolyn, what's on your menu? A quail terrine with morello cherries and madeira on a bed of uh, salad leaves, uh, venison with fig wine, uh, parmesan puff potatoes, spicy cabbage and green beans, and for dessert, a dark chocolate amaretto ice cream with white chocolate mousse. Well, fig wine is a very intriguing newcomer to these studios. Andrew, what do you have for us? I'm cooking salmon and dill popiettes with a preserved lemon relish, um, bacon and parsley dumplings on a hot apple, walnut and fennel salad with a tarragon scented tomato sauce, um, and for dessert it's hot chocolate and orange squares with a rich dark chocolate coating and a piquant orange sauce. Good, well I've waited since 1990 for a dumpling to appear on this series. Now it's time for the hard work to begin. I'm going to send you all off to the kitchens. Good luck. Have a really good time, and let's get cooking. Hey, you got some.
In the tiny village of Wintringham, just an energetic stone's throw from the Humber Bridge, Swiss chef Germain Schwab has been causing something of a stir. His small hotel and restaurant called Wintringham Fields, run by his wife Annie, has been winning numerous accolades from guides and press alike. It's not quite central. Many of the dishes which Germain loves to cook are Swiss, simple, and remind him of his youth. What I'm going to do is seal that uh, pigeon breast very quickly into a frying pan. It's going to be seasoned with salt and pepper. Put that pan on there. I'm going to do my duxel, and I'm going to add some uh, wild pigeon cubes, a little bit of that shallot, the mushrooms. All right, that looks about right. All this is ready. Now I'm going to put some of that duxel on top of the uh, cabbage leaf, which is a Savoy cabbage. Wrap it up in there, back onto the pastry. Quickly sell. I'm going to put the pigeon in for 17 minutes. This is a typical dish that we serve in, in the restaurant, and I suppose we could call it Pigeon Wellington on a bed of uh, Savoy cabbage. Germain, welcome to MasterChef. Very nice to have you join us. Why does Switzerland export so many chefs? I suppose, basically, it's because the, uh, the restauration and hotelry in Switzerland is a big thing, it's a big tourist thing, and it's been going on for decades and we have produced so many chefs but unfortunately unfortunately it's not the same anymore we get good chefs from all over the world now from england from everywhere really tell me your restaurant which is a little bit off the major tourist routes has done very well is a lot of that to do with the fact that you've won so many awards and attracted so many good reviews from all the guides mm. It's no doubt about it, yes, I would say. And it's so important to get in all those guides because there's so many people who read the guides. What do you think it is about your restaurant that compels people to travel from all over to go there? I think it's an ensemble. I think it's a, uh, a things that come together. It's not just basically the food, but it's uh, the service, the accommodation, and all those ingredients that you put together and makes a, a good place. Do you miss the mountains? I do. <laughs> How I miss the ski as well. <laughs> How often do you go back to Switzerland? Oh, we try once a year. You can probably tell me about ingredients that you miss from Switzerland, but what are the ingredients that you discovered at Wintringham Fields that you now <laughs> are completely in love with? Well, there's one ingredient that I really like, and it's, it's beer. Believe it or not, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. The English beer is the best in the world. Yeah, I love beer. So you're happy with that? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. What we're going to do now is have a little wander around the kitchen, see Thank what you. everyone's up to. Thank you. And unravel all these mysterious Eastern dishes. Start off from the red kitchen. Now, you're actually quite close to Grimsby, so... I am, um, yes. We get so, good fish so fish must, must be a, yes. a pet product. And um, you're filleting a lemon sole now? I've filleted the sole and then taking the skin off. It's then rolled, yeah, and so um, put on a, a bed of spinach, which is not cooked, uh, um, some coriander seeds, diced tomato, and shallots on top, then wrapped up in grease broth and baked in the oven. Mm. Why lemon sole rather than sand sole, Dover sole? I like Dover sole, but it, it tends to be more, much more expensive. A thirty-pound budget. How much did you spend? Uh, fractionally under twenty-eight. Um, the ducks were, were quite dear, although I managed to get them a bit cheaper this time than when I was practicing. So they were around about seven pound a piece. Can we see your ducks? Yes. And these are Gressingham ducks, <laughs> these yeah? These are Gressingham ducks. That's one that's ready for the oven. What are you going to do with the legs? Uh, the leg meat is then made into a farce with oh, right. bacon, morels, and um, oh, right. cream. And, and then you're going to stuff, stuff that in the Under there. Right, yeah. And then roast it like that. Yeah. Is got, that from the supermarket, yes? No, that's from a butcher in Bundy. Yes, you, you can get fresh crossing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, very good. Okay. We'll let you very get good. back to your fish, Thank you. your duck, and whatever else <laughs> you're dealing with. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Now, 
Now, Carolyn, I see, has got all her mushrooms out. Looking very exciting. What have you got? Oh, interesting Oysters. Oysters. So, oyster mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, chanterelles. Um, Chinese ones, which yeah. I can never pronounce. Shiitake. Yeah. Shiitake. Uh, organic grown uh, brown mushrooms and some nice local Norfolk mushrooms at the bottom here. Mm. Yeah, you can get ones. I want to see fig wine. I have fig never. Wine. I love right. figs. <laughs> I've never heard of fig wine. Do you make it yourself? Yes. Excellent. All right. So what is it like? Mold wine with figs soaking it's in it. What is it? Brandy, mm. Madeira, red wine, cinnamon, oh, that cardamom. Is fabulous. <laughs> have a whiff of that. Well, wow, that's. <gasps> it reminds me of the Swiss mountains. <laughs> <laughs> And that's going with your pot roasted venison. Venison, yes. We're going to have some red cabbage yep. along with that. Red, red cabbage, cabbage is wonderful. What goes very nicely. Yes. And a little bit of fennel yes. in it as well. All right, fennel seeds. Fennel seeds, yeah. yeah. Just to lift it up Just a little bit. Just to enhance it a little this bit. This is yeah, very cent different. Central European, it isn't is. it? It is. Oh, Eastern, Eastern European, <laughs> yes. Yes, very much so, yes. Oh, well, we're certainly not going to starve no. today, are we? No, no, no. We'll see you later. You might die of cholesterol. <laughs>